are God's misfits really a shadowy, dangerous group that might conspire to, for, to perform other acts of violence? Or might the group merit federal investigation? What are they? And are, are they what they say they are? Misfits who should be left alone to practice their constitutionally guaranteed rights, even if some of their adherents have been charged with double murder. We're joined now by Josh School, a former agent with the FBI and current president of Bow Wave, a national security firm. Um, Josh, great to have you here. So the mission statement for this group, God's Misfits, has this testimonial on its website from one member. I don't try to fit into social circles where I don't belong. I don't consider myself normal, and I hope never to be. Have you ever heard of this group? Elizabeth, I had not heard of this group until it was reported in the affidavit. But I also know that there, unfortunately, is a large sentiment, anti-government sentiment, uh, raging through this country right now. And it seems to have a platform on social media and other places where it's being perpetuated. How often do these anti-government groups commit violence? Well, that's where it begins to cross the line. And it's a, it's a balance for law enforcement to make sure that they are protecting civil liberties, the right to free speech. But then once it crosses into violence, which this clearly has uh, with the two murders, then, then uh, federal authorities do get involved. Yeah, I guess what's most striking about this is there are at least, as of now, four people involved in this. This was an elaborately planned murder. They were buying tasers at the store. They were buying burner phones. They traveled to Hugoton, Texas, to try and kill her, Veronica Butler, in her home or outside her home and failed that first attempt. This was a carefully long-planned thing involving several people. It was involving several people, and all four are in custody that we are aware of right now. But I also think that law enforcement intentionally put God's uh, misfits in the affidavit as this investigation continues. They will be looking at others that could have conspired to support them, to provide them financial resources or other means to perpetuate this crime. Yeah, there was that infamous case that was chronicled in the book Under the Banner of Heaven, where a fundamentalist Mormon sect that started out as anti-tax and anti-government morphed into committing murder. Do you see any parallels between that group in, in Utah and this group called God's Misfits in Oklahoma? Well, I think in the coming days, we will learn a lot more about God's Misfits and who was involved and who may have been part of supporting this heinous act. Right now, what we really have is a custody battle with four people that plan to kill two women, which is horrific. Uh, and so I think over the next couple of weeks, we will find out more about God's misfits and others. These anti-government groups are often quite shadowy. How do you investigate them? How do you get in and get access? Well, it's tough. And, and again, as I mentioned before, you have to protect civil liberties. People have the right to free speech. But eventually, somebody will talk. Somebody will be on social media. Somebody will say something that leads uh, investigators, whether it's uh, state and locals or federal investigators, and they've crossed the line into perpetuating violence, planning violence, planning some sort of attack on a government facility that really crosses that line that allows investigators to do a full-blown investigation. Yeah, explain the psychology of that. Once you think this small law, like I have to pay my taxes or I have to go the speed limit, doesn't apply to me, it's very easy to see how that begins to morph into all these bigger laws like theft, like, and God forbid, murder might also not apply to me. There are a host of groups uh, out there on the domestic extremist side that don't believe that the laws of the land uh, uh, apply to them. So you, you have to balance, again, what are they doing? What are the smaller crimes that state and local law enforcement would investigate? Speeding, refusing to pay fines, you know, uh, liens on properties. And then it, as that aggregates or actually becomes more pervasive, federal authorities usually involved with state and local law enforcement as a part of their the joint terrorism task forces on the fbi side we'll start to take a look at some of these groups and see what else is going on yeah there is word that more people may have actually been involved in the planning and execution of these two murders there are still questions about the father of the children even though he was in rehab did he know anything or was he also just a victim of his own mother's machinations yeah, that's, uh, that was clear in the affidavit that his alibi, he was in, in rehab. However, there's also a statement in there that talks about how his mother was going to take care of this. So what did he know? Right. That's a pretty incriminating statement. It's a very incriminating statement. 
And so, and who else knew? Uh, you know, were there others supporting them? And who, who did not report this as they should have, knowing that violence is about to be perpetrated? Yeah, I think and, and, I'm, I'm struck in the affidavit by how many people were interviewed and said they knew something was happening or that the grandmother was going to take care of Veronica Butler. We wouldn't have to worry about Veronica Butler any longer in this custody dispute over this six-year-old and eight-year-old child. I am struck by that as well. And so this investigation has, is not complete. Uh, yeah. They have solved the murder, but it has a long way to go before they have ferreted out everybody that could have been involved. And thanks so much for watching. Go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.